The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the esoteric series, modern esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. This advertisement is neither an offer to lend nor a commitment to funding. Pen Funding is a marketing and information firm for businesses. We needed cash. Fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment. The banks wouldn't help us. Need cash for your business? Call Pen Funding. We help small business stay in business. If you're in business six months with $10,000 per month in sales, you probably qualify. Call Pen Funding now. Call 800-783-3440. 800-783-3440. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. Penn Funding helped me stay in business. Penn Funding helped us grow. Penn Funding can save your business. We can help you grow your business. Make the call now. If you need cash for your business, call Penn Funding. We help small business stay in business. Need cash for your business? Call 800-783-3440-800-783-3440. Welcome back, everyone. Kelly Joe Mona is my special guest this hour www.kellyjoepsychic.com that's k e l l y j o psychic.com so growing up was a challenge how were you able to circumvent these challenges that that you were having as you were growing up well i finally learned to tell my guides that i'm human and not bombard me with all the information they were bombarding me with I told them you guys are going to fry me I'm human <laughs> calm it down <laughs> calm it down like yeah because they used to give me input all the time and I'd have dead people I'd sit in the bed all night long talking to me and I'd tell them look you guys you gotta leave me alone let me sleep You, can, I can talk to you when I'm mm-hmm. Awake, and I set up time that they can come and visit me. Otherwise, they'll keep you up all night. Now, would that happen even today? Oh, sometimes I have. They get too rowdy, and they really? gang up. Yeah, 
Like you, when I lived in an apartment, I lived next to the highway, and all the dead people that got killed on the highway would come through. <laughs> I'd have, like, I had these two little old ladies at the end of the bed, and, mm-hmm. and they said, oh, we're lost, dear. And the one said, we're lost, dear. And she goes, no, we're not. We just took a long turn. <laughs> I said, you guys have passed away. You need to go to the light. You know. Yeah. And I said, you guys have passed. All, all your loved ones are over there. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go to the light. <laughs> all right. Let me let me ask you something here, Kelly Joe. Are, are you married? Not now. I was. All right. I'm divorced. Okay. Uh, why I was going? Why I asked you that question was because I wanted to know how your husband reacted to all these visitors coming into the bedroom in the middle of the night, disturbing his wife. Well, my one husband didn't quite understand it. He was very scientific. <laughs> he just said, hmm, I don't know about that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, how about the rest of your family, uh, children, sibling? Uh, you know, um, they, my mom yeah. is really, really aware. She used to have uh, precognitive dreams. And then she also had dreams when it was happened to people. Mm. And she asked that to be taken away from her because she would manifest whatever happened to the person right. in her body. So it must be very hard for you to go to a shopping center, to go to a large department store, to go to an airport or even a train station because apparently those who are on the other side are the dead people. No, oh, they're that, everywhere. No, I that, triple bubble myself. My gosh! And and I ask to shut it down. I can cut it on and off now that I'm older. But when I was a kid, mm-hmm. I, I I just heard everything. I could hear arguments in houses. I'd go to the mall and I'd see everything that was wrong with everybody. Oh, <laughs> it was goodness. just like, okay, we need to like learn how to control this. So, so it was overwhelming at one point. Why do you think that you, Kelly Jo Monahan, were selected by the cosmos to have this gift? I guess God gives it to people that can handle it. It's a it's a gift. I look at it as an honor and a gift. How many times in a day, mm-hmm. like if you called me up for a reading or to do a clearing for your house or whatever, right. it's an honor for me to have you trust <clears throat> me to do that for you. How, ma- how many times do you let somebody all over your energy field all yeah, in one day? True. None over here. Like nobody's... Well, wait a minute. My wife asked me to clean the house once in a while. <laughs> That's but it is. Like. It's an honor and it's, yeah. it's your, you're helping the, the souls that are passed on and you're, you're helping the, the live people. But the souls are just souls without a body. They're still a soul. So can we say that the soul is the energy, the very essence of who we really are? Yes. Okay. So In, uh, totally. So what you know, why do we why do some soul, souls stay behind after they have died instead of going to wherever it is where souls go after many reasons because uh, their life is cut short. Mm-hmm. Some people die so quickly they don't know they're dead. Um, some people just hang out because they love the place so much. But aren't there you rules know? and regulations uh, somewhere in the universe that says when you die, you are supposed to go here and the next part of your evolutionary voyage is A, B, C, D, E, F, G? True, but you always have free will. We're the only creature that has free will. An angel has to do the will of God. You can see the light, but you don't have to go through the light. Then it's why, always your choice. Then why is the light there? <laughs> it's for you to go through it. But again, like I say, free will. Sometimes people are so confused, like a lot of times, if you die real quick, you don't even know you're dead. It happens so fast. Or a trauma, like wars. Yes. Um, that'll keep the soul locked into it. Sometimes it's just an energy burn, and it's like it burned into the timeline continuum, and it instant repeats and isn't real. It's just that the, it's like a record player or like a video that keeps being overplayed because it was so traumatic. But sometimes when people are... The, and then if it's not an energy burn, the soul is trapped within that until they recognize that 
it happening that they're dead, then they can cross over and the doorway opens and they go. So do you also I've help do you also help souls to cross over? Oh yeah. I'll go just for fun up in Wisconsin, I'll go to graveyards and cross over graveyards. Um, not everybody's hanging out in the graveyard. Most graveyards are peaceful, but sometimes there's people that haven't resolved their issues. Or if, like one time I went to South Carolina and the gravestones got flooded and they didn't get them in the right place, there was a whole bunch of pissed off people. <laughs> they were mad because they didn't get the gravestones back where they needed to be. I told them, I said, everybody, you need to calm down. <laughs> they, it, they did the best they could. You know, you guys died a long time ago. You know, you, you, even... you must be one heck of a kind of cool person to take on a date. I can just see it. All right, Kelly Joe, what do you want to do tonight, honey? Well, I want to go down to the graveyard, you know, put some people across the light, you know, have some fun, hang around uh, the gravestones. and. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh. I mean, have you ever seen the older gravestones? They're etched so beautifully. You know what? They I used to make I, them out I, of alabaster. See, I, I love the old Celtic gravestones. They, oh, they're They're beautiful. classy. They're classy. You know? I remember somebody saying, why do the, why are the, you know, why are the gravestones so big? And somebody else saying that's because they don't want the, gra- the dead to come back. You know? Or they had lots of money. That's, Richer yeah. people had bigger gravestones. Who says you can't take it with you, huh? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, when, you're, when you're communicating with those on the other side, if we're, if we're, if we're truly energy and our soul is energy... Why would people want to stay behind? You know, because isn't this just a mission we're on? Isn't this a quest we're on, an educational experience that we're on, a, a, a heavenly field trip, for a last for lack of better words? True. We're, and we're in one big giant classroom. Mm-hmm. But some people stay behind because they want to get something uh, put across to the living. Once they tell what they need to tell, they go on, too. But if this is a classroom... Does it really matter what happens after we're gone I, and return to our our energy, spiritual world? It matters in the evolution of the soul. It, what we do here uh, mm-hmm. evolves us. Okay, so what happens to us as we evolve? Like if first, first of all, where do we where do we come from? What decides or what happens to have you and I created as as energy? Well, I saw a place once when I meditated, mm-hmm. and it was just energy balls talking, and they go the speed of thought and the speed of light. There's blue ones, there's green ones, mm-hmm. there's yellow ones. All it is is just energy balls. It's just pure thought energetic form and in this higher place it's indigo purple and I believe that's where the source is and it's God, cosmos, the it, the all there is nobody has to believe me you know but that's what I feel I feel like it's, it's the all that is and it's born out of that but as as a medium, you talk to these spirits, these these energy fields once they have once they have been released. Life goes on. Yeah. Like um, what is it? I, uh, Newton. Energy is needed, created, or destroyed. It just changes form. I used to say Einstein. I had the wrong dude. <laughs> but, um, it you can't kill an atom. Mm-hmm. It just changes form. And that's all we're doing. We're morphing from one body to another body. And we've been everything. We choose everything before we come here, I believe. We choose our lessons. We choose where we're born. We choose our diseases. We choose um, what race, color, and creed we are. We choose uh, everything. And it's to evolve the soul. But- and but there's an essence of us that always comes with us. You know how they say the eyes are the wind of the soul. Yes. I believe the soul essence remains true always. We've been the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
But what is the, what is the purpose? What is our ultimate goal? What are we striving for? To go back to the God source, the all that is. But isn't that what happened when we die? Yes, but it's always our choice. You can choose to stay there, choose to go on. But what I'm trying to get at is, what do we evolve further into? If we're energy now, isn't more that... More pure light, more pure energy. And then, then I believe that we go off and do other creations. Hmm, you and I will talk more when we come back from this news break. Exonation. Kelly Joe Monahan is our guest. www.kellyjoepsychic.com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Kelly Joe and I will be back on the other side of this break with the news from the Mutual Broadcast Network as we continue investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology Monday through Friday from 6 p.m. Eastern until 10. And then the show is repeated in its entirety from, let me see, now it's from 3 a.m. until 7 a.m. I'm Rob McConnell. Kelly Joe Monahan is my guest. We'll be back. Don't go away. Mutual Broadcast News. News. I'm Leo Ashcraft. Indiana Child, Child Welfare, Welfare officials have warned an organization, organization that installed two baby boxes in firehouses where mothers, mothers can drop off unwanted, unwanted newborns anonymously to remove them, them saying they question their safety and whether women, whether women who use them could, could face child, child abandonment charges. charges. Six, Six hospitals, hospitals in Arizona have installed drawers in their emergency rooms that allow women to drop off infants anonymously. Although state law neither authorizes nor prohibits them. them. Nearly two months months after a woman woman was found found severely burned on the the Crow Indian Indian Reservation, the driver is still still seeking seeking information about about the case case federal federal investigators. The victim was found on April 17th in a field near the border between the Northern Cheyenne and Crow Reservation with burns over most of her body. Doctors told the woman's family she had walked about three miles before collapsing. Reservation residents believe the woman was set on fire. Mutual Broadcast News. Depend on it. Is the passionate story of an 
this hour www.kellyjoepsychic.com Kelly Joe um I understand you do house clearing and how do you do a house clearing Well what I do is I never go by myself mm-hmm. I always bring a friend or a couple friends with me and uh, basically it's like a poltergeist or a ghost a land ghost or whatever and what we do is we say a prayer we use salt we salt the doorways and everything, say a prayer, and send them to the light and to the light, and then use sage and just put them out the windows and bless them and have them go. <laughs> but if we've got free will, like you and I were discussing before, what happens if the spirit doesn't want to move? Well, we tell them this time if it, they're bothering people, touching people, and being rowdy, they uh-huh. have to go. You know, if they can cohabitate and not bother the person, great. So yeah. this free will thing really isn't as isn't everything it's put up to be then. Well, when it comes to them bothering, harming, or hurting, mm-hmm. or, and you know, that's not that's against the rules. What has been your most scariest <laughs> experience? <laughs> well. When I was 16, I was called to do an exorcism okay. in a, uh, a town outside of um, Casadega. And I never did an exorcism before. I was looking for a Casadega. We were looking over by Orlando. Didn't know. I just moved here. Didn't know where it was. Mm-hmm. So I took a good friend and another friend. And the lady was looking for me, um, too. And uh, she had a son that was... Possessed. He had. I went. I went in there, and uh, all of a sudden, he's talking in like ten different voices, and I'm going. Mm. So I told everybody in the front room to say the Lord's prayer and keep saying it. Don't quit. You know, bubble white light, bubble themselves. You know, God's light mm-hmm. for protection. So we proceeded to cast out the bad spirits, and they told their names and all that stuff, and it's pretty intense. So we got him. It took. Not a long time, you know, and I told them, you ain't going to do any funny stuff. We ain't going to ha- deal with that stuff. So we cleaned him up, went, went our merry little way, but he was allowed to call because once a vessel's clean, sometimes they come back. And uh, he called a few times, and then he was okay, and he ended up having a good life, getting married, and he's fine now. So, but that was the scariest because really? I never witnessed ten voices coming out of one human being all at once. What was it that you did that expelled this spirit? I cast him out and in, in, I used our Lord Jesus Christ because he had sway over the demons mm-hmm. and I just told them they had to leave and I, I hugged him and they went. You could feel him going out. You know. So how he many- was cussing and swearing and doing the 
<laughs> the stuff, you know. Never heard such nasty words. I mean, I've heard cussing now. I'm sure. older, but back then it's like I was only 16. Like, woo! But it it was a it was it really healed him and helped him. So that was awesome. So would you say that the that the exorcism or or the possession of this person that that you exorcised had a lot in common with Linda Blair when she played in The Exorcist? Sort of, kind of, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Spitting up, cussing, swearing, doing all kinds of weird stuff, swatting. You know, it was it was intense. That was the most scary. And another one that I had was I went to clean a house and the girl was possessed and mm-hmm. it killed their pet. Oh my gosh. And that wasn't good either. And we walked in the room and there was icicles. <laughs> it's like, okay, all righty then. You don't get, you don't show fear and you don't get frightened. You just go, okay, we're, we're, we're going to fix this. There's like a huge vertex in there. It's like when you breathe icicles, that's not good. Yeah, that, that is true, especially in the middle of summer, I would imagine. Right, that's not cool. <laughs> it's like, all righty, then there is something here. Okay, so, so we believe. You. How did you learn how to become an exorcist? I was just taught by spirit. I just go totally by spirit. Mm. Wasn't taught by anybody. Do you know who your spirits are? My guides, yes. yes. I have some very strong guides, and then more are added. My main main guide is Samuel. He's very biblical, and he has the white rolled hair, and he wears he really wears a gown and mm-hmm. the sandals, and he has the rolled hair and the beard and the mustache, you know. So how, is, how do these guides select you, or do you select them? I believe that they select you. They've been with you for eons. It's like you're matched up. When you go to the Council of Twelve, they match you up. Mm-hmm. And what is the Council of Twelve? Twelve spirits that counsel you on what you need to learn and what you need to do. But what happens if someone is of a religion that doesn't believe in the same religious philosophies that... You don't have to. You don't? Nope. All roads lead to God. You can have somebody that that prays to (laughs) Ishkabibble. It don't matter. So, My God isn't better than their God. As long as you believe in something, there's something to work with. Even an atheist believes in something. So would, would this also work on a person who is a practicing Wiccan or a practicing witch? Sure. Really? If they want help. And you I, know, when, when you're with people that don't believe like you do, you don't use, like Jewish people don't believe in Jesus. You just say white light of God. Right. You don't cram anything down anybody's throat. Yeah. That's not nice. <laughs> you use what you had to work with at the time. Because when you're a reader, you yes. aren't judgeful. You can't judge. So, so tell me, uh, Kelly Joe, have you ever had a near-death experience? Yep. <laughs> Can you share that with us? Sure. When I was 13, we were um, on vacation and coming here to Florida and... We had a um, an old Airstream trailer in Dad's van, and there was a pool, and I had a broken arm. I had like a five-pound weight cast on my arm. I'd broken my shoulder, Ouch. and I was swimming in the in the light end of the pool, and then all of a sudden I drifted off into the deep end. And, well, of course, I sunk like a rock, and all of a sudden I I left. I I went on the bottom of it, and all of a sudden I left my body, and I'm looking down, and I'm going. Ooh! At first, I'm guarding. I'm thinking, "Wow, cool! I can breathe water. Yeah. This is cool." And then I'm looking down. It's like, "Oh, that poor person drowned." <laughs> then I decided I, I I knew it was me. I went, "Ooh!" So I had like a an angelic person, young woman, take me to like this vacuum place. It was all white and everything. Mm-hmm. I call it the vacuum place. And then I heard a voice, a man's voice, say, well, it's not her time yet. you got to take her back. What would you bring her up here for? <laughs> she was sort of like a bumbling angel. And uh, 
And then all of a sudden I heard my mom call me, and then I, the man that ran the place was doing CPR on me, and he, he threw me over his back and slapped my back, and all the water came up, and I was fine. My goodness. Uh, can I ask you a question? Why would you go swimming with a cast on? Well, I was in the light end, and I drifted. I was, like, by the steps. Yeah. And I was klutzy, and I just slipped. <laughs> I was a klutzy kid. Sounds like I broke my arm. Sounds like you were a handful for your parents. Oh, poor, poor mom and dad. <laughs> I think that's why mom has white hair. Oh, she's a member of the Q-tip crowd. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing I wanted to... Um, are we allowed to give out our phone numbers, too? Sure, go ahead, dear. Yeah, my phone number is 561-333-5367. And another neat aspect is when the dead people show up to you, they show up in their perfect time in their life. Like, there isn't really old people over there. They're, they're all, like, in their 30s and 40s and 20s when well, they look the best. But what happens if somebody died in their early teens or in infancy? They show up as a baby. Oh, okay. You know, or they show up as the teen. But they usually, they'll show you how they looked, but then when they show themselves again, they show at their prime, how they looked in their prime, how they thought they looked their best. You know, a lot of times if right. the old people will die and their legs don't work, they'll, they'll show their pretty shoes. Women will show their pretty shoes and show they can dance. <laughs> it's like, my legs work. Or... Like somebody that's committed suicide, they'll say, my brain's not messed up anymore. My brain works. <laughs> <laughs> or if they were mentally ill. I, I would have never assumed or I never would have thought that dead people had senses of humor. Oh, they do. They play, they laugh, they giggle. Like, for instance, I met a, um, a dead um, atheist. Mm -hmm. A lady came in and asked her dad to come through. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cuss. I'm gonna say shit. Well, you shouldn't. He goes, no, you, this no, 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 wait a second. Shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I'm gonna have he to. Goes, whoa, 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 He goes. The colors are more bright than I ever thought. He goes. It's real. He says I didn't believe it. You're getting shot over here because you can't swear. Oh, I'm sorry. This, Pardon this, me. this is real radio. It's not a. a I apologize. Okay, because if you do that again, I'm going to have to shoot you again. Either okay, that or, I apologize. Or do this to you. I'm sorry. Okay. Apology accepted. I won't do it again. Okay. But he was awesome to meet and talk to. He was just really cool. How hard is it for you to work when a child is involved? It's it's very difficult. You know, it's very um, intense. But it's very rewarding. So. And it it really helps because, like, after the the child passes, you mm -hmm. can they can see what you've done to their room. Like, oh, I see. there was a little boy that passed on, and he said that he loved his new yellow curtains and his new bedspread. Oh. And then one time, one little girl she says, "Would you quit messing up my bedspread? You keep crying on it. It's not an all over the pillow. <laughs> don't cry. Don't don't mess up the pillow. You got to change that pillowcase." Oh. But and they're, they're, they they see that you painted. They see that you've changed your house, mm -hmm. and they come and comfort their moms and dads. And they use um, music. They use all kinds of things. Like um, this one lady, the picture of the little girl kept falling over. She kept knocking it over. And it's it's really neat to be able to tell them that they're really there and they aren't like. The, the mothers just sometimes come in and say, well, am I crazy? I said, no, they're really there. Or same with um, wives losing their husbands. They really do feel them sit on the bed. You know, there, there's a new Ghostbuster movie coming out. Four Ghostbuster ladies and a, and a male Ghostbuster secretary. How do you think that this movie is going to affect the ghost hunting community? It'll probably pick it up again. Yeah. It'll make it on the forefront again. So why do you think that the paranormal is so 
up front these days. Like, you know, I, I've seen a rise over the 25 years doing this show, and I can't remember a time when everyone is talking about the paranormal in one aspect or another. Because people are more curious now. They're more open to it. It isn't like taboo anymore. That's All the shows have made it less taboo. It, well, well are, th- are the shows an asset or a hindrance? Because, you know, these shows are... are Sometimes I think they're a hindrance mm-hmm. because you aren't going to see stuff every time you do an investigation. Investigations are boring, 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 yeah. boring. Just like police surveillance work. You know, nothing. I mean, and why do they, I want to ask a question. Why do they always think you got to do it at night? If there's a haunting, there's a haunting in the day and nighttime, you know. You know, I, I've often wondered and asked myself, asked guess myself, and the answer I most get is... It's haunted. It's, it's haunted in the day and nighttime. You don't have to just go it at night. No, but I, but the answer that I get that makes most sense is that most of these people who do investigations work during the day. Yeah. And they're off at night. They do this on their own time. They're they're not funded by anybody to do it. So it makes perfect sense that, yeah, well, yeah, you do it when you're not working, which is at night. Right. Yeah. So where has been the most haunted place that you have ever done an investigation at? Well, I wasn't doing an investigation. I was on vacation. Jerome, Arizona. Share it with us. Um, I went up there. I always meet somebody that warns me. I guess it was an angel, a guy in a white painting uniform. Mm -hmm. He was all in white. And he goes, be careful, girly girl. There's ACDCs up there. He goes, some are good and some are bad, so be careful going up there. And I looked around, he was gone. So we go up the mountain, go up to Jerome, and I was with other girlfriends. And I'm, I'm walking along, and all of a sudden I said, why is it so sooty? I said, There's so, that my girlfriends couldn't see the soot. I see the soot. They didn't see the soot. And I said, something bad happened here. So we went and we found a, a information or library, and... And there were spirits all around. And I said, I, I, something bad happened here. What happened is there was a mine collapse. Oh, gosh. And that's why it was sooty. And many men died in the mine collapse. So that's why I was breathing soot, because I fell down on my knees because I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I'm like, uh-oh, I already something's wrong. And then, of course, we had stuff chasing down the mountain. I had to clear that all up. Yeah, You know, it's like, oh, really? It, it looked like um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, all the spirits flying up. It's like, oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that was the most haunted place that I've been. All right. Um, if you had to give three steps... To becoming a paranormal investigator. This is going to be a little quiz because I've got to take my break in a in a minute. Okay. What would be your advice to people listening tonight around the world who, based on your conversation with me, are saying to them, says, you know what, I'd like to do the same thing that Kelly Joe Monahan does. What well, advice I... would you give them? Now, don't give me the answer now. Give me the answer no. when we come back from this break. Okay. All right, Exo Nation, Kelly Joe Monahan is our guest this hour. And her website is, do you have your pencils and paper ready? There you go. www.kellyjoepsychic.com. That's www.kellyjoepsychic.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. The Exxon is a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we come to you Monday through Friday from 6 p.m. Eastern until 10 p.m. Eastern right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network and the IPBN Radio Network. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. 
As this is the first book in the esoteric series, modern esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and much, much more. The Exxon TV Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.xzonetv.com. It's a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-605-6818. That's 800-605-6818. 800-605-6818. Welcome back, everyone. Kelly Jo Monahan is our special guest of this hour. Her website is www.kellyjoepsychic.com. First of all, Kelly Jo, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a great hour. But tell me, what are the th- top three things a person who is contemplating becoming a paranormal investigator or dealing in the paranormal, based on your experience, should do? The top three. Always use some kind of protection, prayer, whatever. Mm-hmm. Always protect yourself. Be respectful of the dead people. And don't ever bring anything home. <laughs> Do people really bring attachments with them home? Oh, yeah, they can. And is that because they're not protecting themselves? Correct. You can be like a sponge and oh observe them like little people walking behind you. <laughs> That's not good. Wow. I call them hitchhikers. Hitchhikers. I understand that these hitchhikers can also be brought home when people buy antiques. Yes. You must cleanse your antiques. Now, how would one go about cleansing a, a, an antique? Smudge it and cleanse it that way. All right. Now, for our listeners who may not know what smudging is, how would you explain that? It's a stick of sage, and the smoke, the Indians believe that the smoke helps clean and cleanse and get rid of bad spirits. So what you do is you, you put the smoke all around the object, open a window, mm-hmm. and just ask whatever soul is attached to it to go to light, through the light. Yeah, the Irish use a bottle of whiskey. That would work, too. Sure would. <laughs> give it a blessing. <laughs> I give it, you know what the difference between an Irish wake and an Irish wedding is? No. One less drunk. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, I can say that because I'm Irish. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm the world's tallest leprechaun at six foot five. That I am. That I am. Uh, 
So what have you got going in the future? Are you going to be doing more investigations? Are you going to be doing any psychic affairs? And can people contact you for one-on-one private consultations? Yes, they can. I'm going to be doing a psychic fair in Sarasota, Mm -hmm. July 23rd and 24th. Okay. And they can contact me privately on on my phone number, 561-333-5367. And is there anything else that you'll be doing? Well, when I get, I usually do it per call. I I do do house clearings when they call me. I do that. Can you do house clearings over the internet or through the phones? I've done it long distance. Wow. You can. I did an English castle once. An entire English castle? It it was very haunted and it blew out the, the, it had iron on the outside and it blew the iron out from the inside out. My goodness, I hope the person didn't burn their lips. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it, it was clean. <laughs> Kelly, Joe, you and I have to say so long for now. Again, thank you very thank much you. for joining us. It's been a great pleasure talking to you and enjoy. Is it this weekend your long weekend or next weekend? Um, next weekend is the, the July 4th. Yes. Well, I know I won't be speaking to you and you know before that. So from everyone here to everyone out there, including yourself, happy July 4th weekend, dear. Thank you. You have a wonderful evening. Thank you for having me. It's been my great pleasure. Take care of yourself, Kelly Joe. Don't be a stranger. Bye. Bye bye now. Exo Nation, Kelly Joe Monahan has been my guest this hour. Once again, her website is www.kellyjoepsychic.com. And I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at the top of the hour with Dr. Curtis Kuhn. We're going to be talking about the Metabolic Institute here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Oh, my goodness. Busy times. And to everyone out there, have a great, safe weekend. Remember, drinking and driving do not mix. Unless you want at times have an early near-death experience. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the Mutual Broadcast Network.